have uh, exciting speakers uh, ahead of us here. Julie Kraft, Bay Area Regional Director of uh, Infusionsoft, is going to be doing a fireside chat with Renu Bhatia. She is the uh, VP of uh, you know, Marvel Semiconductors here uh, in the Bay Area. So uh, that uh, I'll welcome Julie and Renu onto the stage. Thank you. Hello. Good afternoon. Renu is getting her mic on, so she'll be right out. I don't know any jokes, or I would, uh, I would share them. Um, and uh, yes, I'm, I know you're quite surprised I'm not in my Indian dress today. So if, you, if anybody saw me yesterday, <laughs> they didn't recognize me today <laughs> without my Indian dress on. Raise your hand if you're going tonight to the dinner entertainment. OK, look for me tonight. <laughs> I have a new Indian dress. <laughs> I'll be changing. You'll need sunglasses. <laughs> it's quite beautiful. I love my Indian attire, so. Uh, anyway, Renu's coming out. Renu's in the house. Give it up for Renu. Hi, Renu. Welcome. Hey, thank you. <laughs> and it is such a pleasure to be in the company of such accomplished women today. So what an honor. And when we're here next year, we expect the house to be completely full because uh, we want to see, we're hoping we just see more and more women flow into the, the Thai Women's Forum. So absolutely. thank you for being here, Renu. Um, and I know you're quite busy. You're always on an airplane jetting around, um, managing hundreds of people for Marvell within a you know, $3 billion uh, company. So we really appreciate your time and your insights today. And the one question I have, and the first question is going to be something that I would love to learn from you, is was this an interest that you always had to become a, a woman executive in tech and fight all against all the, uh, the male-dominated world? Or, or when did this career direction happen for you? Tell us a little bit about your journey and how you got here today. Okay, so uh, let me start off by saying that I was always very fascinated by technology. And uh, the principles of engineering and how they change our world, how they make our world better. So that passion started in high school. And then when I ended up in college, I had decided to pursue my bachelor's in electrical engineering. Uh, I worked very, very closely with one of my professors, uh, Professor Newcomb, and ended up designing a neural circuit. So you can say I was a little bit of a geek already. And now, uh, after graduation, I ended up at Texas Instruments in Dallas, and I was pulled aside by a couple of executives who said, hey, you have a great engineering background, and why don't you combine it with business? And that's where you know, my business career was born. Uh, after that, after TI, I've been at many startups in the Bay Area as well as on the East Coast, and ended up at Marvell in 2002. So it's been a decade-long employment at Marvell. Marvell has grown from 500 people to about 7,500 people and has gone from a couple hundred million dollar company to in billions of revenue. So it is a great uh, place to be. I'm very excited. Uh, Marvell is a wonderful uh, leader in uh, technology space, and we are top five sab fabulous semiconductor companies. That is so awesome. I just, wow, <laughs> that, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, let's give it up for right now because that's just like amazing. Um, and to just to tag on to that, uh, this is gonna be a really big secret, but um, high tech is a male dominated world, right? Yes, we Don't all tell know anybody. that. Okay, but you've been able to not only make it into that world to be one of the top women executives within tech, but you made it in semiconductor industry, which, you know, data I've looked at says only about 5% of directors are, are going to be females within that industry. So um, that is quite an accomplishment. And we'd love to hear, you know, was it all just smooth sailing? Did they just open the doors and put out the red carpet and say, come on in? Or did you have any challenges along the way? And, and how did you overcome those challenges as you, as you made it through to uh, the, this great accomplishment where you're at today? 
Um, so I'll start off by saying that technology is a very, very exciting place for women. As you uh, watch you know, the growth of Facebook, Google, Twitter, all of these exciting companies, also in the semi-space, uh, you see that technology is one industry that's growing at a very, very rapid pace. So it's, I was very passionate about it, and I ended up in that uh, space, so I'm very excited about that. But at the end of the day, it is a very male-dominated world. And how do we, as women, uh, take on the challenge, look at everything that is an obstacle as an opportunity? I think that's where I succeeded the most. I looked at every obstacle and I said, oh, that's an opportunity to excel. Why? And it's not a job for me. Going to work or waking up in the morning at 7 a.m. and making those calls to my customers or resolving certain complex problems, it is not a job for me. So I looked at everything that surrounded me that was an obstacle and looked at it as, looked at it as an opportunity. Um, and I think that's what really helped me get where I am. Well, that's awesome. So let's talk a little bit, since uh, it's mostly women in the room here, and uh, uh, let's give them some survival tips or some tactics. What, give us some advice in terms of how did you make it through as a woman and continue to make it through? Because, you know, back in the early days of tech, and, and I've been in tech for a long time as well, um, you know, it was kind of, you, you don't talk about, there, oh my gosh, there's an issue at childcare. You know? um, and we both have children the same age, and so I, I can appreciate what it is to be a woman in the workforce to be able to say, yes, how do we have that balance and be able to, at the same time, compete at a level as, as some of the men are in the tech world. So just talk a little bit about survival tips as a woman competing in the man's world and then finding the balance as a woman and uh, trying to balance that with your personal life and home life. Um, we all know it's hard to achieve balance. So, um, you know, the way I look at life is you know, always keep a big picture in mind. Uh, wake up every morning and prioritize things that you need to do for the day while you're focusing on long-term projects, uh, long-term sprints. Also be looking at each day at a time what you need to prioritize, whether it's your time with your child, whether it's your uh, deadlines on the project or your community involvement. And if you align what your passions are, with what you need to do, it becomes very, very easy. So even if it's at 11 o'clock at night, I will send out notes about um, you know, fundraising for the Children's Discovery Museum, who I'm a part, which I'm a part of, and I'm very passionate about education of children. So um, my day starts at 6 a.m. when I'm taking calls from India and other geographies uh, related to customer issues, partnerships, and then my day ends sometimes with um, notes about how um, I need to do fundraising for a, for a cause or a passion that I have. So just juggling all of that and prioritizing on a daily basis, basis really helps me. And uh, so talking about that, I don't know if your husband's in the room, um, but do you have- I'm not sure if he is. You can let us in on some secrets here. Um, so tell us a little bit about, you know, just on, on continuing on that balance um, concept, you know, do you have any rules or any tips around trying to maintain that balance in the home? Do you, do you, for example, say we never work on Sundays or I only fly out at certain times or, you know, is there any tips you can give for other women trying to maintain that balance and, and, and and give us the insights because you clearly have been able to do it all. So uh, give us your insights on how that's possible. So if my husband is in the room, this would be a good time to tell him that I actually do value him and love him because, uh, because in the day, you know, there are days that we just text each other and I come home and I'm too tired to spend any time with my kid or with my husband. So let's just face it, you know, when uh, as women, we never have really any downtime. So whether uh, it's helping your kid excel in school or trying to get involved with the community side of things or keeping uh, your projects and deadlines and sanity at work um, or being a mentor, because I'm, I'm also very passionate about being mentor to other ladies, um, all of that takes time and consumes time. So what really has helped me um, over the years is having a great support network. So 
create a support network at home as well as at work. So the support network at home, make sure that you have um, your family helping you, make sure that uh, your child is taken care of by a school and you trust them, you know, trust the school, make sure that the teachers are involved with him, create a support network around your child and around your family. And then at work, uh, make sure that you seek people who, wanna, who you want to be like. So for example, my mentor, Weili Dai, who's the co-founder of Marvell, extremely passionate person, very creative and out of box thinker. She's a great mentor, but I also work very, very closely with my teams and my peers and uh, work in a very collaborative fashion and they are always eager to help me. So making sure that your peers and your teams uh, value you and they are all there to support you is also very, very important. That's awesome. Okay, good advice. Um, so as we're talking about some leaders out there would say, you know, it's a risk to hire a woman and to promote them up within a, a tech world, right? There's a lot of risks. Um, you know, there, there's the balance issues, there's the family issues, depending on their age, they may be starting a family. So there's just, there might be some risks. So go to the flip side of that. And why don't you share with us as a, as a woman executive, very successful hiring and working and leading hundreds of people in the tech world. Tell us what they're missing out on. What are they missing out on by not hiring women and promoting women? So um, if you see, women are the biggest consumers today of gadgets. I mean, we're using iPads, we're using smartphones. We are going to be using mobile health devices to monitor our family, our parents. Um, so women are the biggest consumers of devices today, of technology. So if we're creating devices without taking inputs from our end consumers, which are also men and women, then we're going to, we as companies are going to lose that edge, that competitive edge. So women need to be part of our organization, designing products, creating user interfaces for these devices, or in any shape or form, uh, they need to be involved with the products. And frankly, I think the products of today look much better now that they have mm -hmm. women involved. I mean, uh, I looked at products 15, 20 years ago, and when, only when men were involved, no, uh, you know, no offense to men here, <laughs> but uh, products just look better now that we're involved. <laughs> um, so. Woo! <laughs> I hope everybody's tweeting that. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, that's a very good tip. So if you're out there as a woman executive looking to hire your team, that's a very good point to keep in mind that you want your best consumers to be part of your team, right? That's awesome. Um, so tell us a little bit about what's next for you. Like, you're young still, you've accomplished so much in your life, but where, where, I'm, you have an aggressive spirit, so where are you headed? What, what would you like to see yourself doing in five years from now? So uh, first of all, I've really enjoyed my uh, time at Marvell and I continue to enjoy that. And I see that Marvell is going to have still tremendous growth. And uh, I think we have a lot of room for growth, for improvements. And I am going to be helping, you know, build the next era of devices with Marvell. So I'm very awesome. excited about that. Um, also, I think that on my, uh, you know, on my personal and uh, community involvement will increase over time. I am now a board uh, member at the Ch Chamber of Commerce, so that just happened a few months ago. And I'm getting more and more involved in education for young children. So I believe that uh, it's time for me to start giving more to the community. And then of course, uh, to my 12-year-old son as he pursues his education and goes to high school and college. That's awesome, great. Okay, so I think we're about out of time and, and I know people are probably ready for lunch, um, but why don't you give us just one piece of advice for women in the room, uh, just one kind of final word and piece of advice that you want everyone here today to walk away with and of course to tweet, um, that uh, if they're interested in pursuing a career in tech or they're trying to get to that next level of promotion within a, the ranks of a tech organization, what is that piece of advice to help them be successful in doing that? Okay, so I have actually not one, sorry Julie, I have three pieces of advice here. Oh good. So uh, one is that believe in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, then nobody will believe in you. So every morning when you wake up, believe in yourself. Um, the second piece of advice is that 
when you run into an obstacle, there are obstacles everywhere, but look at those as opportunities to excel. Uh, you're not pursuing a job these days. It's not a nine to five world. We're always connected. Uh, it is a uh, pursuit for happiness, pursuit for opportunities. So anytime you run into an obstacle, you need to just say, hey, that is an opportunity for me to excel and I will overcome that. And third, um, all, of the, all of this is possible if you have a great uh, mentor network and a great support network. So um, support network could be people that are peers at your work, people that work for you, also uh, other people in the organization outside. So it's not just about friends, it's about people that you can seek that can give you advice, uh, encourage you, believe in you, and believe in your dreams and in your vision. So those were my three pieces of advice. Awesome. And hopefully you all had a chance to tweet those. Um, we'll look forward to seeing them out there. Uh, but thank you so much. It's such an honor to meet with you today, Renu. And uh, we, I think we'll head over to the Media Lounge, but we will both be here for a while. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to come up and, and chat with us. And uh, good luck to everyone out there as you continue your careers. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you for listening. And if you have any questions, let me know how I can help. Thank you.